So I'm going to start with a little bit of an intro because I haven't done coffee and games in a while. And so this is the second coffee and games in about a week. I actually had Mela on last week, which was really fun about uh, rating and builds and essentially what Hardstuck is trying to do with your uh, puggable builds and getting people to try to raid without being elitist and show that not everyone is toxic. So this is a little bit less of a... Uh, of a hot take type podcast. This is more about excitement for End of Dragons. So we're here with Teapot, Lara, and Muck. And I'm super excited because um, I kind of was out of my comfort zone with doing podcasts previously with having two people, which was Teapot and Muck. And then I picked you guys because I knew about possibly having high energy sarcasm and how you might play off each other. And I was like, I'm going to see if I can actually rein that in. So now having three people, I think we have great uh, possibly differences in opinion and contrast. So I'm really excited. So uh, Laura, if you want to start with where everybody can find you first. Sure thing. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Serenity. Um, I used to do these musical tries to rate videos. And I've been on Twitch for about a year. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Um I stream Guild of Steel almost every single day. Um, and I do some variety as well. That's about it, I guess. <laughs> That's perfect. And Muck? Uh, hello, everyone. I am Mucklight Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth. I stream on Twitch every day over three years in a row, and I can be found on twitch.tv slash muckluck, uh, muckluck YouTube. And it's actually called muckluck YouTube because the guy who owns the muckluck channel makes shoes. And mucklucklabs.com, which is the website that we've got with the guides that I've made and things like that for various games. Awesome. And of course, Teapot. It's me. I don't do any variety, not yet. I don't stream every day, but I do stream most days. Twitch on TV, forward slash money teapot. That's the same thing everywhere. Easy social media, hardstuck.gg as well to go and make fun of our builds. <laughs> but so That's actually, it. just with what everyone has said, we've had a lot of new stuff for everybody. So Lara, how did your concert go after coming back from vacation? How was that? What did you play? Oh, right. Um, so for, for those of you who don't know, um, I am the guild leader of this music guild called CMI. And some people think that we're a raiding guild. We're, we're not actually a raiding guild. We, we play music. Uh, and we had a big concert this Saturday. Uh, so we had like lots of people in the guild like practice songs for about the last two months. And uh, this Saturday, it all came together. And uh, we had like three hours of in-game music which was really cool. And I was really proud of everyone. <laughs> we really had yeah, some, uh, hours. some cool stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. so much. And everybody was talking about you doing the concert and we have, um, so it's going to sound super dorky, but my fiance and I are actually getting married uh, next month. And everybody's like, you should do an in-game wedding. And they're like, you should ask Lara's Music Guild to play your in-game wedding so you can have live music. And I'm like, man, that'll be better than our actual wedding. That's going to be a playlist on our iPods. <laughs> We're poor. <laughs> Just imagining an in-game wedding getting DMCA struck. <laughs> oh my god. So, you know, we might have to chat after this about availability. <laughs> there's a good spot for come. it in Lion's Arch. There, are, there actually is, though. This is true. There's... There's a spot in Lion's Arch where a lot of people actually are, pit not even real weddings as such, they just role play. Do That's role awesome. play weddings. It's there. It's a beautiful <laughs> archway. You know, the sun is there, the giant lobster in the background. It's, it's beautiful. It really yeah, is. Someone actually uh, got the wedding attire for me. And it was funny because I'm like, my main is a Norn. I love the Norn. And I know I get, I get picked on a lot about it, but just the way, like their culture, everything about them, like totally matches me. And, uh, the wedding attire looks bad on the Nord. I'm not going to lie. Like, even with certain dyes, I'm like, I might just get, if we do it, I'll have to be on my Silvari because you actually have like the pretty branch and the flowers. But at any rate, uh, so Muck, you actually have your, it, you said it was Muck Luck Labs for your website and it's up? Yes. Yeah. Anything you want to share with us about that? When did you actually have it finally launched? What's up there so far? And how do um, you delegate the difference between what you put on YouTube and what you're putting on the website? So the website is supposed to be a place for the evergreen content, um, the stuff that's like like uh, guides, uh, things like that, uh, it, for the most part. And I've made guides for various games. I'm most known for the work I've done for like Guild Wars 2 stuff. 
So I've got a section of the website that is just Guild Wars 2 stuff. And at this point, I'm nearing having made 100 guides for the game. So I wanted a better way to organize it than just having a YouTube playlist that is just bleh, you know, with everything in one spot. So uh, the website just has them, you know, divided like, you know, legendary crafting, uh, PVE, PVP, stuff like that. Um, and I get asked a lot, like, oh, well, what makes that different from, you know, like hard stucks um, or uh, the, you know, the wiki or, you know, just going to YouTube, stuff like that. And honestly, it's it's just one. My website only has the stuff that I myself have made. And it actually has a section where I, you know, it's like recommended other websites. Hard stuck is on there, by the way, Teapot. But you know, if somebody asks me for builds, <laughs> like I've got a few build guides for builds I myself played with that I enjoyed. You know, I can tell someone how to play Druid. I can tell someone how to PvP on a Ranger. If someone asked me how to PvP on a Weaver. I'm like, I don't know. They fart, fire goes everywhere, my pets die. I'm not sure what's going on. So like, <laughs> I, you want Weaver, you, you go, you go over to Hard Stuck and read whatever they wrote over there about Weaver. So I, I've got the general guides for getting started in all game modes, but for like the specific class stuff, you know, I send people elsewhere. But, you know, I've got like the, the get to the point raid guides where I try to condense boss fights as much as possible. You know, just the stuff that I'm known for. That's awesome, though. Are you doing all of the coding yourself just out of curiosity or is no, it like a set um, template? Or? I, I actually got a lot of help with that. Um, I mm, a few months ago, the, the whole thing came together startlingly fast. A few months ago, I expressed my interest in doing that project on like to the com my community and a bunch of them were like, oh, let me do the back end of this. Let me do the front end. Let me make and like, OK, hold on. Let me and I just grabbed all of them, and put them in a discord channel. And I'm like, all right, this is the nerd channel now. Sounds familiar. I was like, I was like, I can't afford to pay all of you. I was willing to pay <laughs> a person. And they just, it's kind of like, you know, in cartoons when people fight and there's just like a dust cloud and there's crap flying out of it. It was like mm -hmm. that. And then just like the website came together in like a month. So I was very, very fortunate. I was very lucky that these people that were, had experienced coding helped me with it. So I was more like the director, if anything. I was like, all right, I want this there. I want this there. I want to link to this, et cetera. So I kind of designed the whole thing, but they did the back end work. And that's awesome. No, that's really yeah. cool. <laughs> and uh, speaking of websites and other things and possibly competitions, so Teapot, I don't know if you watched the podcast that I did uh, with Mela last week, but I may or may not have pressed him and tried to pressure him about things that Hardstuck may be doing concerning the elite specs. And he's just the sweetest guy. <laughs> Because he's just like, I can't say everything because obviously we don't want people to like be prepping for something that may or may not happen. But uh, so I believe going off of that, when we first or at least the last time we spoke about Hardstuck, it was just kind of like bare bones getting ready to um, be unveiled. And now your website is also up for that. So can you talk a little bit about that? What's already on there, the competitions you've done recently, and maybe a little bit of the contest you might be doing soon? <laughs> so yeah the the website is technically up it's not done yet though it's not launched we're slow very slow and lazy uh so it's taking a little longer uh there's a lot on it though it's a lot um it's still pretty bare bones but you know like the the bones are starting to grow a little bit of meat on them at this point like that's not maybe a good image to think about but there it is <laughs> uh probably gonna get it up by the end of end of the month roughly maybe a little bit longer than that i mean like you guys know me right i'm always on time i was on time to this podcast i'm on time to the website launch but yeah i mean um you know we, we are gonna be doing lots of contests and the, the website is fairly broad in scope it's going to be covering Every game mode, um, every specialization, even core, hopefully, because we know that some people want to play a core elementalist, for example, and will try and provide something that will actually mm, work, yeah. right, or, or work <laughs> as well as it can. Okay, because ArenaNet, you know, they they love elite specializations, poor odd core specializations, not the best things in the universe, not going to lie most of the time. But, you know, we want to have stuff that is there as well. And yeah, of course, that includes the new elites too. We've already, uh, you know, we've already been scratching our heads thinking about what we're going to do um, when, you know, when the expansion comes out. Oh, with regards to online guides, uh, video guides, all that kind of thing. But yeah, as, as you exactly mentioned, Hardsuck is not just like a build website or a guide website. It's going to be much more of a, a community platform, uh, an event platform there. Uh, you'll be able to see where all the events are, all the contests. We've got a benchmark contest to see who can be the sweatiest uh, benchmarker for all the top DPS numbers with on Willbender, Virtuoso, and Harbinger. Uh, we've got a 3v3 tournament. There's going to be another PV tournament. There's going to be loads of PP. There's going to be loads of raids. <laughs> we've got everything. It's too much to even talk about. But that's why I've got a calendar for it, okay? The calendar will show you what's going on. There's nothing on it right now, 
but <laughs> there will be soon. Okay, easy, easy peasy. But yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes to hardsight.gg, uh, it is still definitely in its infancy. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of it very, very soon, though. I mean, the project is all very much um, going on right now. You know, we've got big old Discord server with all sorts of exciting things going on there. But yeah, website is definitely a big work in progress, big labor of love. A lot of people have been working on it um, in their spare time. A lot of, once again, very helpful volunteers. I mean, look, the girls who community guys, big bunch of helpers. Love to see it. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's finally coming to fruition. And I'm actually really excited for kind of the final third of this year, actually, because that's when I predict that all of our systems and infrastructure will actually be done, which nice. is nice. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. And actually, what I was trying to get everyone in today and see what everyone would want to talk about and possibly debate, which I think would be a lot of fun, is... First and foremost, the live stream, everything that's been announced so far for End of Dragons. What is everyone most excited for? Lara, what is your favorite thing? Well, what was your favorite thing from the live stream that was announced that you hope will be expanded on or what you're, you know, what you're shooting for? Um, there was this one moment when one of the developers mentioned skips. And when they talked about stuff you can do on your skiff, the skiffs are like these boats that are coming in End of Dragons that you can uh, you can get on with your friends and you can go fish. But um, the developer mentioned that you can play music on your boat, which is like just straight up that that just made me very happy. I just sat there like they actually mentioned instruments on this live stream. This is the best mm -hmm. day of my life, and. I, I just cannot uh, wait. That to comment just... was purely for your guild. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it probably was, honestly. I feel like I they've, just, uh... yeah, like they've oh, sorry, actually been paying attention to a lot of those things. And it's like, it's not just, you know, uh, you know, high end DPS builds anymore. Like there's a lot of art that goes with it. And I believe even on Twitter, like Guild Wars 2 art is trending now. The memes are trending even more. People are paying attention to music and actually RP. So no. Um, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I feel like they're actually looking at those things, which is why they mentioned it. So, um, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm just, I, I just, I just want to get like to Xinjie or something and then just get like boats everywhere and then just have a huge boat concert. And that just sounds like the best <laughs> thing. Um, so that, that was like a highlight for me, but <laughs> you know, it's not just about what I want. It's about what the community wants. And I just think that. Just Canva looks so darn amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some nice, like, nice little shots, nice little screenshots from uh, from Xingjie, and I'm just really excited to get into those maps. Um, they talked a bit about how they want these maps to actually have longevity. Um, Balfire was a great expansion, but a lot of those maps actually don't get visited that much anymore. A lot of players they just kind of played through, and then they were just kind of done with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we're going to get maps that are a bit like Heart of Thorns, maps which have some legs, maps that stick around a bit, and just offer lots of stuff to do. So that's probably the thing I'm excited for the most right now. Nice. I was actually really excited about just hearing about fishing because I feel like, you know, going along with the skips, I was like, we're going to have boat rides and we're going to have guild fishing trips and it's going to be great. And <laughs> I I'm just coming from WoW and 14. It was kind of a big thing going like for WoW, you just kind of AFK fish, right? And then for 14, it's a full, like you, you actually have a rotation for fishing and then you have to like uh, you, you'll catch a little fish and then you'll have to bait a bigger fish onto your pole to like get a different fish and then you'll have to hit a different button to increase the rarity and the weight. And um, So I'm, I'm actually really excited to see how Guild Wars 2 will do it because I feel like the way combat is and how they've added, you know, things like gliders for Heart of Thorns, which is super innovative. I honestly still like my glider better than my mount. I've, I finally just got my, my Raptor mount in Path of Fire. And so I'm really excited to see what they do for fishing, but I know a lot of people were concerned that it was just going to be the fishing expansion. I don't know if either of, if, if any of you guys have heard that or if you have any, uh, you know, weigh in for that, if you, you know, I think it's a lot more than fishing. I think it was really cool, but I know that a lot of people, especially like on the Reddit were, Kind of upset about there being fishing integrated at all so yep Th this is something that you actually see and this is a very broad thing we can probably get into this later eod is the is the anti path of fire path of fire was design bloat they bloated the hell out of the game okay uh, if you look at well we'll talk about this later but if you look at scourge versus harbinger ooh, ouch <laughs> you know you're looking at willbender versus firebrand ah <laughs> oh no, ah, that's not good. And you, and you can continue going on this way. In my opinion, they've actually been very conservative with their design. 
fishing, uh, skiffs, uh, siege cells, another mount, not layering on another feature. This is something that I actually really approve of. I think the game is very, very bloaty, right? You know, you'll go into a strike mission. Now you've got to pick up the orbs. Now you've got this random special action hockey that blows you up. You've got damage reduction. Now you've got the way station everywhere to press action. You need to break the bar, right? You know, you're playing less of the game and more of the UI, right? This is something that's happened a lot, actually, over the course of the game. Uh, and I think they're actively trying to prevent that getting more extreme than it already is. Um, and this disappoints people, and I understand why it does, because it looks like the expansion is not gonna have these absolute mega ultra, this is gonna completely transform and layer on another layer of gameplay to every area of the game, like something like gliding or mounts does. It looks like it's gonna be little activities that don't necessarily overlap with the rest of the gameplay, but are fun and exciting, All right? When it comes right down to it, I think that's what mastery is almost best suited as, like little mini games, little activities, bit of extra flavor, but they should not in any way, like, well, one, invalidate old content, which is kind of what mounts do, like mounts kind of mess up old content pretty badly, gliding mm -hmm. as well, really, to be honest, and definitely way station stuff, like the ice, excuse me, uh, the Icebridge Saga stuff, definitely invalidates a lot of older content. So I think going in this direction is better, but people are disappointed, and I understand why, but they're wrong to be disappointed, so they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can go into a little bit more about that now, actually, because a lot of people are saying that they're doing it because of uh, everything that's been happening with people wanting to leave World of Warcraft and finding something different. And a lot of people have been going to Final Fantasy XIV because it's closer to an MMO uh, that World of Warcraft is with the tab targeting. And they have almost the same raid structure, um, almost the same exploration structure, and it's completely different than Guild Wars 2. And so a lot of people have also been saying that the reason that all of these mini games are coming in and not something that's actually like changing the game completely or being a huge game changer and like having to play the UI or having things that are uh, really, really intricate, unless you make them intricate, which is always a thing, especially with builds, um, that it's because they're catering to people coming over. What do you guys think about that? I, I disagree with that. Um, and the reason I say that is it takes time to set up this stuff. Like, it takes time to do the skiffs, the fishing, you know, make, make the camp or the background, like, make the trailers. Like, even if they just rushed a trailer out and they were like, oh, we'll make this, we'll make this work later. Right. They had to have started all of that before WoW started crashing and burning. Mm -hmm. Like, it, the, the timeline just doesn't add up. So I think it's very fortunate for Guild Wars 2 that what they're doing aligns with what's happening with WoW and FF14 and stuff like that. I think there are a lot of people leaving WoW going to both Guild Wars 2 and FF14. FF14 is definitely getting more people, don't get me wrong, but I think that is just because they are much more well-known. Right. Um, they've been on their advertising game for many, many years. And Guild Wars 2 just was like, wait, no one's in the marketing department? Shoot, hire somebody right now. You know, <laughs> they, they just got started. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think it's more to cater to them. I just think it kind of lined up that way. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it too. But Teapot, you look like you were going to say something. Oh yeah, no, I, I was going to say that, you know, on that note, Mark's absolutely right here. Like, you know, I think it's very appropriate that if anyone here played Guild Wars 1, um, if you played Factions, when you went through the Canton campaign, you'd become closer to the stars. Uh, this definitely is that for Guild Wars 2. Ender Dragons is, okay, the stars all aligning in its favor. <laughs> Uh, like all these other games, <laughs> not good, okay? You know, it's not very good at all. And, you know, I, I would just add one thing to what Mox said there. He's completely right, of course, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. I would say the other thing here is that um, the big reason why people went to Final Fantasy, not Guild Wars 2, the familiarity was there as well. But, look, if you ask a Final Fantasy player or a WoW player about Guild Wars 2, they'll just say, oh, is that game still alive? Yep. Right? I think that's kind of like the reason why you don't see more people doing it. Um, you know, it it's kind of, it's kind of the, it's the B team. It's the MMO that no one thinks about anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's, that comes into it. But, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, though, with the familiarity thing. Like, Final Fantasy does have the advantage that it is literally WoW, except you're a cat girl. That is basically that game and you know i mean look you know the, the final fantasy people they used to roast me for saying that then their own game director said that they actually wanted to make final fantasy world of warcraft so boom i win <laughs> 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 and actually speaking of guild wars one uh i know lara you were actually playing that recently and trying to get through all of the campaigns again did you actually finish are you are you on nightfall currently or did it's you finish how, how many how many times <laughs> Merc keeps roasting me on Twitter every time I post a tweet. I'm like, we're going live with Guild Wars Nightfall. And then Merc goes every like, time. stop showing the box in your tweet. <laughs> One I'm time. very proud to own this box. Okay? <laughs> I'm very proud of this box. 
So uh, no, but- what are you excited about with with Cantha and going back? Do you have anything? I mean, a, a lot of people have been saying, Zan, don't spoil yourself because you haven't played Guild Wars 1. And I'm kind of over here like it's it's eventually going to be a thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish all three campaigns before EOD comes out or or anything. So is there anything that you think might come up now that we're we're in the future? We know that the sea is no longer jade. It's been shattered. It looks like we've seen my trend, so my trend's possibly around. Is there anything that you can connect to Guild Wars 1 that you're hoping to see? Well, I, I think just Canfa in general is just like a really exciting location for a lot of people. Um, you know, we, we just talked right before this, we talked about sort of like the expansion not layering these new exciting features on top of the existing game, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I think something which which people are sometimes forgetting about is that Canva itself is almost like a big selling point for this expansion. There are a lot of like MMO veterans out there who played factions back in the day, who have like great memories to like that whole setting, um, to that whole continent. And I've just seen a lot of people go like, hey, Guild Wars 2, I kind of forgot about that game. Oh, the, hey, there's a Canva expansion. That sounds pretty cool. Um, so in a sense, I think just Canva is just such like a rich, unique setting. There's like so many interesting things you can do with, with that location. Um, we've got like the Jade Sea, we've got Echo Vault, we've got Xingjie, we've got this giant city. I think for pretty much every like Guild Wars lore setting enthusiast like myself, like I, I'm just like obsessed with like reading the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> I think for all those people, that is just like a really, really exciting feature. Um, just like seeing what has changed, what has stayed the same, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if there's anything in specific which I would like to see return almost in End of Dragons, but for what I can see so far, um, they seem to be doing a good job at like creating something which feels fresh, but also sort of appeals to the nostalgia of all Mm -hmm. these people who played factions back in the day. So since you're a big lore nerd and you've actually played through uh, all of the campaigns for Guild Wars 1 multiple times, can I give you a little bit of uh, a theory that I kind of have and you can kind of judge my little theory about uh, End of Dragons? All right. So I think that Marjorie's family is somehow like either Canton royalty and was kind of exiled or had something to do with uh, a family member helping Shiro. And so that's why her family doesn't talk about like their family, doesn't talk about their lineage and why Marjorie originally when her sister died, didn't want Cass to come back to meet her mom um, because her mom like just doesn't want to see people, doesn't want people to know or be able to tell that they might look like people from Cantha. And I know that it would have changed over, it's like, what, 200 years or something like that uh, for EOD. But yeah, so that's that's a little bit of my theory that I was really excited about. I'm like, Marjorie's totally part of this and it had something to do with Shiro. And I finally saw the factions trailer, uh, or at least the part with Shiro and like what he actually did. Such a cool character. <laughs> I'm so excited to actually play Guild Wars 1 just because of Shiro. But what do you think? Do you think any of that makes any sense? I thought it would I be feel cool. like, I feel like they could honestly just go anywhere. Um, but um, a, a big like sort of lore point in the history of Canva is that at a certain point, this this emperor started like getting really authoritarian. They started like sort of banning all the non-humans from Canva. Uh, and they also started like banning anyone who disagrees with him. Uh, so some of your uh, theory sounds like it could be right on the money. Like a lot of these Canfan refugees that we see in Tyrion and stuff, they mm-hmm. they might have had ancestors who might have disagreed with the emperor or something like that. Uh, regardless, though, I'm just really excited for the story. Yeah, same. Uh, it's, it's like, <laughs> I'm just glad that we're not getting an expansion, which is like, yo, we're going to kill another dragon. It, it, it feels more interesting than like, yo, Mordermoth is in the jungle and we're going to murder him. <laughs> I, I like it so far. Nice. I'm excited. <laughs> and so, boys, Muck Teapot, what was your favorite part of the uh, of the live stream? Is there something you guys are really looking forward to or anything that you're looking toward predicting for End of Dragons? I want gameplay. I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> I play the video game. Yes. Um, you know, the story, 
it's all well and good. But, you know, Path of Fire demonstrates that you can't just have that. It's not good enough. Uh, the Path of Fire story was really good. It was well executed. And honestly, so was Living Story Season 4. But then you run around and it's actually a desert. It was a bit too close to reality, I think, um, with what they were going for there. So not great. I think that the really exciting stuff is actually the gameplay elements. Elite specs, hand them all over. Strike mission CMs, let's go. That hit that. Oh, ah, ah. <laughs> People sleep on this stuff so much. I, the veterans and champions having new skills compared to just their normal like regular pathetic mob counterparts running around an open world yeah these are all amazing changes i really like the design direction they're taking uh with uh world gameplay uh, uh elite specs i think obviously it's amazing no matter what it's gonna be it's gonna be epic epic gaming strike mission challenge modes there as well hard content that will actually be regular not waiting two years for three bosses right so <laughs> we're in business okay we're in business end of dragons okay end of drought okay well hey and look cmc <laughs> was telling us that on the stream there as well okay just like me staying hydrated really <laughs> he's been waiting to use that yeah <laughs> You're right. People are like sleeping on those strike CMs. I feel, I I feel that's the the big thing for a lot of people in this expansion. Mm -hmm. And it's actually funny that you mentioned the well, not funny that you mentioned challenge mode strikes. Of course you would, but there were some people that were still like no raids, challenge mode strikes, but no raids, no like harder raids. And I'm over here going, but your like strikes might be yeah. a better. Direction. If it's difficult enough, then it's literally going to be the same thing. Yeah. But it depends. It depends if they make it challenging enough to uh, appease them. That's I mean, true. I kind of hope that the normal strike missions are kind of like what they are now, where like a pug could go in there. It, not the pugs on EU that ask for 150 LI, like a real pug. <laughs> but like a pug could go in there. But then if they flip on challenge mode, like Ooh. I want it to just knock their teeth through the back of their head. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want, I want it to be so difficult that even the redditors are like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" Like that. That's that's what I would love to what see. What did we ask like, for? When, when they first released Bone Skinner and they accidentally overtuned it, and it was just like <laughs> it was destroying everybody. Like yeah, just th throw one of those in there just to keep them in check. <laughs> so, do you have anything you're really looking forward to as well, or anything that really definitely stuck out? the specs like? Uh, you know, new lands is great. New story is great. But for me, the thing that keeps me playing this game after, I think for me, it's almost 6,000 hours, is the fact that I just, I enjoy the, the combat gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's so many games that I've tried where, you know, I had a big pretty world. Maybe the story was good. I don't know. And I just, I looked at the class selection and I could not find a class that I could really get into. And so I didn't play it for very long. Um, this game has classes that I can really just be like, oh man, this is awesome, I love this. And I can get into it. So more selection with the uh, elite specs, uh, their their weapon types, their selection. Like, you know, right now I'm, my favorite PvP build is a druid using a short bow. Not using the druid weapon, which is a staff, but mm -hmm. if I chose to do that, that's like a whole different type of gameplay. So, you know, whatever the new elite spec is for the classes I enjoy, whatever their new weapon type is, you know, uh, combining it with the existing traits, you know, making Condi builds, support builds, power builds, that excites me the most. You know, yeah, seeing Bram do something stupid for the 47th time is all well and good, but <laughs> for me, it's, it's the, the builds is the number one draw, and then everything else is second. Nice. So speaking of those, everybody got a chance to try out, uh, all, all, did you guys try all three of the specs yesterday? Or do you feel feel like you tried them enough enough to to talk about them with different like uh, gear sets and different trait lines and things like that, different weapons even for all of the new specs? And what did you guys think? Finally, at long last, <laughs> everyone will now realize that I was right about Path of Fire, okay? <laughs> and people are starting to recognize this because yeah, I I, I played. A lot of Harbinger and looked at a lot of the abilities and watched a lot of gameplay, got a lot of feedback with uh, some of my sweaty gamers about stuff like Willbender, uh, Virtuoso in World vs. World, different game modes. And yeah, the, the really big problem with these End of Dragon Elite specializations is that they're well designed. Um, you know, that's, I know that's a weird thing to say, but they are way too fair. 
uh, to be honest. Like they have very high numbers in PVE, Harbinger's like 40K DPS. That's whatever, right? It, it doesn't matter, they'll, they'll nerf that. You know, Virtuoso again, 40K, again, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's whatever. Um, and same with Willbender. Willbender is like 37, 40K, like that kind of region. But the thing is in PVP and World versus World, you, you can really contrast the design, right? Like the strength of the design elements of these two things. And if you compare something like Harbinger to Scourge, it's not even close, right? Um, Scourge does way more than Harbinger does. And it does it without any traits. And, and you can see this, right? If you want to say, if you play Harbinger and you go take all your DPS traits, you are literally Green Weaver, right? You do, you have 11k health. You can only do damage. That's the only thing you do, right? Nothing else. <laughs> if you do the same thing on Scourge, take full DPS traits, you're a full DPS, but you've got Connie Cleanse, 10 target barrier, you're 20k HP, you're fully ranged, you're unkillable, right? And you can revive people at the same time. Love to see it, right? That's good stuff. Again, look at Willbender, compare it to Firebrand. Willbender, you're a full um, glass cannon, like very selfish build build, doesn't really support, doesn't really do anything, don't give any boons really, um, it's just not a good time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you do some good damage, awesome, and you're really fast, yeah, all right, <laughs> okay, and then you look at Firebrand, Firebrand, boom, 37k, 40k DPS, if you go full DPS, still have Tome 2, still have Tome 3, still have an Aegis heal skill with no cast time, right, with no punish for using it whatsoever, because they actually made it even less punishing to use, because they made mantras, uh, never need to be recharged now as well, uh, you yeah. can take it, you basically have a free utility, so you can take an extra thing there as well with boons you have all of that baked into your baseline kit and this is the ultimate problem path of fire has finally brought its ultimate revenge onto the game um because <laughs> it is now it is now very very clear how far the design of elite specializations got crept during path of fire and now that arena has decided to actually design them in a fair way uh with actual restrictions and not too much overloaded baseline kit it turns out that it feels bad, right? Uh, and people are now going like, oh no, this 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 doesn't feel very good. Well, so, yeah, it's because, you know, for years we've been playing with Firebrand and Scourge. So yeah, of course it doesn't <laughs> feel good. Uh, and yeah, they've got a lot of work to do. ArenaNet, not only do they have to actually tune these elite specializations, they have to bring the hammer down on Path of Fire. It is actually, in my opinion, necessary. Because right now, if you try and play Willbender in PvP, you could get reported, you're probably match manipulating, you could be win trading, right? That's griefing. Don't do that. <laughs> um, is that how it is and, on you? Know, you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also thinking about changing the, the name of this podcast to just Scourge. <laughs> Well, it, it, I, 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 know, I know I talk about this a lot, uh, but the thing is, it really, it really is a big problem. Uh, and, you know, just to see but unlike, no, like, this is actually the biggest threat to Ender Dragons, elite specializations, is Path of Fire, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, when I play on my Harbinger, I go like, oh, nice, I've got loads of DPS. But the thing is, you're not carrying, you aren't just destroying the encounter. Like, the, right. you know, if you had a choice between six Harbingers and six Scourges, you'd actually be insane to go with the six Harbingers because six Scourges will flatten basically everything and six Harbingers will just be like a nice, happy downstate simulator a lot of the time, right? right. Which, again, is actually good design, <laughs> right? It's high risk, high reward. It's just that the Scourge is high reward, no risk, right? That's the problem here. Um, uh, and I'm I am actually a little bit scared of the elite specializations because I actually think that ArenaNet will stick with this design design philosophy the entire time. We've seen CMC, uh, the balance, you know, mm -hmm. the balance guy, talk about a lot of this stuff. He was talking about it on stream, uh, and you know, he's probably involved in making sure that it's not too crazy in all these different game modes. Right. But yeah, I, I think part of the fire right now is a bit of a bully. Um, it's it's bullying EOD pretty big right now, um, and. It will be interesting to see how they actually manage that with the remaining ones, uh, because uh, as of right now, uh, I, I think that, yeah, it's it's a little bit scary um, for poor old End of Dragons. But in a way, it's actually good because what we see with End of Dragons is kind of where the game should be. If every spec in PvP was like Harbinger, Willbender and Virtuoso, honestly, PvP would probably be in a really really good spot there you know they're extremely fair right they're very right. fair specs they have they do something and they have a punish right they have a strength and a weakness I mean, virtuoso is probably i mean hey you're gonna love this muck i know you don't know a big fan of mesmers virtuoso is probably the least unfair build in the entire game right right now i would say that is <laughs> how how CMC the actual build really is. It is extraordinarily fair. It's 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 so fair, it's probably unplayable. Right. Nice.
And it's actually yeah, funny, I, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I was <laughs> going to kind of segue from that and also answer your question at the same time. So yesterday, <laughs> I, I wasn't really uh, drawn by any of these three new Elite specs to play them much, but I wanted to know what they could do. I made one of each one. I went to the PvP lobby. I used all their moves on dummies so I could, like, recognize them, the visual cues, stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, let's try to fight these monsters. And I, I started queuing for PvP on my Ranger. And of course, you know, you're queuing last night, 90% of everyone you run into is running these new specs. So, mm -hmm. I, I, and I gotta say, like, the Virtuoso, oh, I just started calling them no clones. I love fighting those. <laughs> like, they, they are the least confusing Nesmers no I've ever fought against. Pro I, I would, after one day of experience, I would say they're probably not that great for PvP compared to their counterparts. Like, Mirage just terrify me way more than that. Mm -hmm. um, the Willbenders. I'd say they definitely have a place in PvP, PvE. I completely agree with everything uh, Teapot just said, comparing them to Firebrands. Um, but in, in PvP, the, the one that gave me the most trouble after playing like 10 games in a row last night and running into dozens of these things was actually one that he was running double swords and a hammer. And it surprised me because I, I had seen the Guardian with a hammer since like the 80s. And he would teleport onto me with any of his 18 different teleports and then put the ring of, you know, you're, you're trapped in a baby gate on me. And if... You know, if it was just me and him, I, I would sometimes win, sometimes lose. If there was anyone else nearby on his team, though, I was trapped in a box and I, I would I would get shredded. It was almost it was similar to when like a spellbreaker locks you down and then somebody yep. else joins in. There's actually a way to get 100 percent uptime on chill with that currently with the hammer too, using all oh, of fantastic. those abilities. Something so to look forward to. Away. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, the, the last one, though, the Harbinger. There was one, like, of course, there's lots of bad ones. It was a brand new class. It was 12 hours old. There were people <laughs> that were bad at it. But there was one guy. <laughs> that I ran into like three games in a row and he was really good and it was giving me a trouble. And he was all he was using the Harbinger Shroud for no more than like one or two seconds at a time. He would use it, use a mobility skill, get out of it, or he would like use it, ult you, get out of it. And he 90% of the time he was just pistol one, two, three. He, he would just stay away. Yeah. I think all of his utility skills were movement skills like spectral walk, flesh worm, stuff like that. He would just constantly try to keep like a 900 distance and he would just pick us apart because the Harbinger pistol is like an engineer pistol on crack. Like it, it, it does like it, it does the exact same stuff, but all the numbers are way higher, and it, it's at, it's a real threat. And he would just constantly just shroud, reposition, turn shroud off, pew pew pew. And he was giving us a really hard time. And I I, I was watching him, and I was just like, this feels like the way to play it. Because if he stayed in shroud too long, he'd just make himself squishy. <laughs> and yeah, what about you? Is, is definitely the 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 you know kind of like the stronger uh it's definitely the one that is currently doing well but yeah sorry uh go ahead you're segue funny. into lara i want lara's <laughs> i know well hey, this is perfect we're wrong. though say i'm wrong come on well, do it no it's perfect because we have such start different yelling. like comparisons in different ways that they were tested for the first day like I, honestly because when i did it i was looking at feel because nothing has felt as comfortable for me as Elementalist. I just got into Weaver and I'm like in heaven. I'm just swapping stuff, seeing how everything works, not looking anything up. And I'm just like, this is amazing. And so Laura, I will definitely ask you in a second, but for me, like, and what's really funny about it is going into like looking at Willbender just for the, the, the live stream when they're showing off the elites. You know, you have Harbinger, you have Virtuoso, like there's some extra things that you can do with that, right? Like, um, but but you're absolutely right, uh, Teapot, I agree with you, is that a lot of it is very homogenized and very fair. And, uh, and and just in comparison, like I'm not even comparing it to Path of Fire, but I saw Willbender and I'm like, so it's a melee that can have 20 different gap closers. That's cool. Like, that's not super exciting to me. But it, it could be to other people. But for me, it was like, I'm really excited about the complexity that I use with, you know, um, you know, dual dagger core Ellie or trying to figure out how to like max out my might all the time on like my my Condi Tempest or just starting Weaver. And I'm excited to do both Condi and Power Weaver and see if I can get it to work with a sword and a dagger rather than a sword and a focus, especially for Condi. And so um, I, I was I was really excited. And so for me, it's a feel thing. And so it's awesome that Muck was like, I want to see how I can beat them. And Teapot's all, OK, so in PvP and World v. World, this is what you can do. These are like, you know, good bu good builds. This is what it felt like. There's a lot of people that purely looked at DPS and even changing the weapons away from th th their new weapon kits. And so I think this is really cool. So, yeah, Laura, what did you think? What was your... How did you dictate I, uh, what you liked and didn't like? I think I, I do actually have kind of a similar perspective on this as you do, Zandri, um, because I am not much of a theory crafter. 
I really like fractals. I really, I really like rates. I like challenging content. But for me, Billscraft is something which I am not super interested in. Um, I just look at the benchmarks and I just copy what other people do. And then I just try my best. I, I'm, I'm one of those people. Hey, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so yesterday, I, I was like looking at all the traits and stuff and kind of like trying to... To, to see some patterns, it was actually really obvious because all the traits were just like in a line. Like if you wanted to do like the power, you just took like the top line. Yep. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> about being like, fair wow. and homogenized, and then these are all yeah. the things you take for this. I was actually sitting there like, wow, I, I actually understand what's going on here. No, but so that's the thing. I, I, I don't really have much of a perspective on like, oh, this one is very powerful. This one is, is not as powerful. I was just like purely looking at like how do I like the style of the specialization? Do I like their animations? How does it feel to be using these skills? Um, and so far, I'm just I'm very positive. I, I mm -hmm. really like how um, how all these classes just kind of have something that sets them apart. Uh, you know, looking at something like Harbinger, um, it's it just like completely like turns Necromancer upside down with the way that the shrouds works compared to the other specializations. And stuff like how um, you just don't have any clones when you play Virtuoso. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. And I it almost feels like we're getting new classes in a sense. Mm -hmm. One thing which I definitely did notice, um, and I, I think this kind of plays into what you said, people, it's about it feeling like fair specializations. The thing I felt was that they were all like relatively straightforward. Like there was no um, <laughs> firebrands of like three different tomes that you go into when you drop oh, out yeah. of. <laughs> I, I felt that the design was like like you said almost like fair and, and fairly straightforward um which i think some people will maybe not like as much because they'll be like uh, they'll, they'll be kind of used to like these sort of almost like a bloated elite specializations which you've had in the past mm -hmm. um but i'm all for this so far um i had, had very very positive uh, first impressions also, just I, I went into a strike with a mission with my chat, <laughs> and we just all were like, we're gonna just play these new classes or new these specializations. We have no clue what we're doing, and we wiped on like one of the easiest strike missions in the game. It mm -hmm. was just kind of wild to to actually like. I've got a guide for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun um, to see what it's like when you're suddenly <laughs> doing this and you don't have like. Makes sense. You know, you don't have these these certain specializations carrying you through, and and of course, people still need to learn how to use it. It's not final, um, right? But my my initial impressions are good. Mm -hmm. um, however, now today, I'm just gonna copy what the smart people did, and then <laughs> I'll probably have a whole new impression. <laughs> See, and I actually completely agree too, especially with um, you know trying to get more outreach and trying to get people from different games. And it seems like we were talking about a little bit about promotion before we're like, oh, we don't, we don't have anybody promoting, you know, the game internally. Okay. Well you're on it now. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and getting these people, you know, from world of Warcraft, these little bit bit bigger streamers, like, uh, from those games, like stay, uh, stay safe. Um, Lux has been playing a lot as well. There's a couple of other people and it, it, having those graphics be so much more bright and in your face is actually funny that you mentioned that because I love it especially coming from the last game I played being Final Fantasy XIV. And there are some people that will watch it and watch a combat for that. And they're like, there is so much brightness and, and all of these ability graphics. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, but then there's other people that are like, I can't play without really, you know, really pretty graphics and having things be really flashy. And so I actually, especially for Virtuoso for me, I think that's really cool. And uh, one of the things that I've always tried to mention to people as a selling point is because you don't have to like the farming for both games for 14 and Guild Wars 2, your progress is kind of saved and you don't have to play it every day if you don't want to. And so I always call Guild Wars 2 like a good addendum as kind of like a selling point to start to get people over here. So you can you can technically play both. And uh, I, I honestly think, especially with the graphics, that that's a really good thing, especially for getting people, possibly a streamer from 14 to get the word, word out there for those people too. But, but yeah, so... <laughs> That's a lot of fun. We actually went into, uh, I tried to get as many new elite specs as possible and I'd never led a raid before. And I've only done, I've done raid wing one and raid wing two once. And I absolutely loved it. And so last night for me, for the elite specs, I'm like, we're all just gonna go in there and we're gonna fight Slothazor. And people are like, I've, I've never raided before. And I'm like, I don't care, get in here. Like, we'll be fine. And we actually kept like consistently getting the boss down to like 
like 35% or something like that with people who had never even stepped in a raid. And I'm like, see, it's easy. It's easy and being silly. And people are like, yeah, but these elite specs, like, <laughs> I think someone actually mentioned that Will Bender didn't have a lot of mobility. And I was like, what? <laughs> but there's so much poison and you can't control it as much. So you might go past them into the poison. It wasn't the first anyone that was actually in the raid. It was someone in chat. And I was like, are you trolling? Like, <laughs> Oh, on, on that topic, super short story. So I found out when I was testing classes on the dummies in the lobby yesterday, mm -hmm. the Willbender, um, it's their utility skill where they, they turn into a Beyblade for a second and they mm -hmm. do like a fiery roundhouse thing. I forget the name of it. I found out the hard way. If you've got a target, you go up to your target and stop, similar to like Ranger Greatsword 3 when they like fly forward in a line. If you don't have a target, you just go forward and you have no control of your character until it's done with the animation. And I was by one of the dummies that is by a cliff. And I was like, all right, let's try this one. And I hit it. I'm like, no, no, stop, stop. And I just yeeted myself right off the cliff, spinning off into the sunset. I'm like, all right, that one has no brakes. Okay. No. <laughs> That's awesome. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but there are some people that were like, oh, I don't necessarily like using uh, dual swords for Willbender. I think a lot of people were using like, oh my gosh, what was it? I don't That's remember. I think it was like Scepter Sword or something. But a lot of people were calling it like a Dragon Hunter skin or like a Dragon Hunter redo. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, just without the traps and the bows. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so what, what did people mean when they said that? Well, what they meant is, is that right now in PvE, uh, if you're playing a power build, you're either playing Core Guardian uh, or you are playing Dragon Hunter. And the the issue is that people are having with Willbender is that the play style is essentially identical to those two builds. The as in the rotation, the rotational abilities are the same right you just rotate through in a very similar fashion uh, is essentially the complaint there which is is somewhat a valid one it's kind of the issue with adding um an offhand not a main hand and also not changing the mechanic or not or not having like a very very rotation defining profession mechanic if that makes any sense mm -hmm. so because that uh, because that you don't have this like ultra rotational defining mechanic or a main hand weapon, it is very, very similar. If, for example, um, Harbinger is insanely different because at, for such a long time now, if you play DPS Necro, you're like, oh, I guess I'll press all my scepter abilities off cooldown. Nice. Uh, but now um, you now have the ability. To, oh, now you've got a weapons up to pistol. Now you don't want to camp set for the entire time because pistol's really good. So you've got to manage these two weapons. You've got to go in shroud, but you don't want to really be. You don't want to be in there for too long because you've got to manage all your other cooldowns. It's almost like NG uh, in some ways, where you're kind of keeping track of everything. You want to make sure you're using everything off cooldown, essentially. Um, very effective. It, it, like Harbinger is super, super different, and Virtuoso is honestly less different uh, as well, right? Again, it's not like super, super uh, altering it, but it definitely is a very different feel with the way it works mechanically. The issue is that in PvE, Willbender is very similar to Core Guardian and Dragon Hunter in the way that it tends to play out. You know, it, it's essentially because in my opinion, it's very clearly designed to be a PvP spec, right? A PvP kind of like Roma, uh, same with Jewel, um, same in World versus World 2. So it hasn't really, doesn't really have anything to define itself in PvE as of yet, but that's kind of the criticism there. Uh, you know, it, funny enough though, I, I think that it's, it's, it's somewhat of an interesting one because it is very different. And I, I've got to say, like, just to kind of throw this in there at the end, because I kind of went a little bit hard on the EOD specs. I don't want people to think <laughs> that I actually hate them. I actually love them. I think they're amazing. Like, I, I've got to say, the first three that we've seen here, Virtuoso, Harbinger, and Willbender, I am abs honestly blown away with the Reading Nets creativity. I really love what they've done here. Like they are so different. Mm -hmm. uh, I know like I said it's the same, but it's different. It, it's the same in the way in the way you press your buttons, but mechanically <laughs> it is extremely different. They're all very, very different yeah. uh, in the way they operate there. And I love that. I think it's awesome. Um, uh, I think they have made a few mistakes that's caused it to feel a little bit samey, mostly because you're a bit railroaded into the decisions you make, which is something that uh, Lara pointed out, which I think is definitely a bit of a problem. But yeah, I, I think that Arena has honestly knocked out of the park. I cannot wait to see what they've come up with next because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, guys. It's going to be absolute lunacy uh, with what we're going to see here. And I hope that continues. Right. Was that earlier when she said more. that there's no one like Firebrand with these like extra weapons with all the tomes and you said not yet? I had this like 
<laughs> I had this like traumatic flash in my head of elementalists getting like four new elements at the same uh -oh. time. Uh oh. There I actually, go. I thought it would be really cool if there was a way to like, because obviously once you finish out the weaver trait line, there's essentially a way to double weave even more. And I thought it would have been cool if an, instead of getting new weapons, you got another element and actually ar add arcane mm -hmm. into your element line instead of just having it be a trait and add like extra utilities. And I thought that that would be so fun. I was like, triple weave, let's go, let's figure this out. So I thought that would have been fun, but... Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but it looks like all of the uh, the code and the weapons are in for the other classes, too. So people already, we're not going to talk about it, but um, yeah, so my hopes and dreams have been dashed, but. <laughs> it could be fake, could be a leak, and if it's a leak, could we don't fake, talk about it. Could leaks. be a leak, yeah. Um, but, something but which it, I actually thought was very interesting um, is you were talking about the Willbender earlier and how, how like someone in your chat said that they weren't actually very mobile. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I feel like the thing there. about Willbender is that people just kind of had like the wrong expectations. Like everyone on Reddit last week was being like, oh, Willbender is just like Thief, but as a guardian, it is a guardian, but it's a Thief. Turns out it's just very much still guardian. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more mobile, but it's, it's like nothing like Thief. And now I, I feel like everyone's kind of like turned around. Yep. Previously, everyone was like, oh, it's so unoriginal. It's just Thief. And now everyone's kind of like, Oh, I thought it was like Thief, but it's, it's actually just quite a lot like regular Guardian, but with a bit more mobility. I, I feel like that's where some of the negativity around the Will Bender that I've seen on the internet kind of stems from. Just people having this expectation that they would be like teleporting around like constantly, um, but instead they're just kind of teleporting around occasionally. And it's still very much like the yeah. same Guardian we all know and love in a sense. I just thought it was cute because everybody's like, it's going to, you know, it's going to take over a thief and you know, yeah. like nobody's going to play thief. And my fiance, who is a thief main, is over there going, yeah, I'm just going to like steal every single boon they have. I'm literally like, I'm literally just going to keep them stunned and make it so that they can't move. Like, yo, yeah, it's going to be so great. So it was really cute, too. And, and it was funny because on the Reddit, like just again, for me looking at it, because I was so excited about how... Um, like elementless plays. And when I look at builds, I'm like, okay, so how can I make this work with this? How can I weapon swap for this and end up getting the extra torment with the vulnerability and make it so they can't move? For me, looking at Willbender was just, it, yeah, exactly what I said. It was like, okay, I'm just going to keep being a melee with a gap closer. It was, it was a lot more fun to play than I expected, but it was cute. Like you said, seeing everybody be super excited about it. And now everyone's like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> Well, it people is a beta. Are, they, 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 they can change things. Mm -hmm. People are very good at identifying something that's scary, right? Uh, so people were wrong about Will Bender, but they were right that it had a potential to be extremely terrifying, uh, particularly in a PvP context. So in PvP, Thief has been nerfed a fair bit, right? To the point where using one short bow five, which is infiltrator's arrow, it's like a very key mobility skill, costs eight initiative. Like a thief at base has 10 initiative. If you take trickery, you have 13. So you use well over half of your resources to use this one skill, right? And thief is still an absolute cornerstone in the PvP meta at high level. Like I, a lot of PvP players would say that the game is unplayable without Thief, right? You cannot win. You will lose if you don't have a Thief on your team at high level PvP, mm -hmm. right? So this is why people are very scared of mechanics like this. And I think they're right to be this way too. Uh, not that it would necessarily be wrong. You know, you can change the cooldowns, right? All the stuff. But that's the reason why people were kind of freaking out about um, Will Bender a bit. Because I think there is definitely an alternate reality where it doesn't just teleport to you and then give you five points by dying very quickly. Where it is actually an absolute monster, right? a complete terror. Um, and I think people are kind of right to be a little bit cautious around certain mechanics like that. It was definitely the one that stood out as the most potentially game breaking, right? That could mm -hmm. like genuinely reshape, particularly PVP um, with, with, with some of these. People were really scared of the courage trait that made it so you can't die. Uh, but I mean, hey, everyone was wrong about that. I was right though. Nice. Cause I said it was trash. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this like the third time you've said that on this podcast so far? I I'm sitting here wait, like, like I'm, I'm waiting for. Yeah, I was right. yeah. Yep, no, I was these right. comments are going to yeah. be fantastic. I'm so excited <laughs> because at any other time, like I'll put together, I'm like, it's going to be a really well thought out podcast. And I love asking things based on people's answers and stuff. And I've literally had people focus on like how many times I've taken a sip of coffee or how many times I like smile and laugh. And uh, I think in, in one of mine from uh, when I was doing the uh, one of our podcasts, Muck, um, someone had said that I was like, I, I looked like a psycho because of how much, how many times I laughed. And I'm like, I'm going to look even worse today because I'm like Ignore, downing I, on, coffee on, on, on one of laughing. the videos I did with you, there was someone in the comment section who said, Muck, can you stop smiling? You've been doing that the whole time. You freaking creep. And yeah. I just said, no. Why are you having but any fun like, no. doing these podcasts? I'm sorry. I'm enjoying life more than you. I know. And I'm over here going, that's a good thing, right? Like if I'm interviewing someone and they're smiling and laughing and talking about other things, Reddit, that's a just good thing. <laughs> You oh, have to actually, look like you're not enjoying yourself. I know, right? Just <laughs> I don't like the... any of you. What am I doing here? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, other guys. I, just... I really wanted to I... discuss, though. <laughs> As two pots over there trying to I, make even more say, of me. I just, I just need to have my revenge because you know, whenever I stream, the chat always calls me an idiot, always debates me. The YouTube calls always make fun of me. I now have my opportunity to say that I was right. Okay, so there you go. And they, they and I'm just going to ignore the calls. Just going to turn them off, right? Yeah, Boom. that's okay. Uh, block I mean, them all. It was actually funny because I finally had my first posts on Reddit, and one of them, one of them, speaking oh. of being called <laughs> stupid, was uh, so I, I was hoping for great. No, we can. It's okay. So for, it's it's elite specializations. It's going off of that. It totally connects. So I was like, I was memeing with my fiance, like we were, we were having popcorn and we do this thing where we say we're going to do something. And then we end up just hanging out and talking about something or other. And a lot of times it's Guild Wars too. And so we're like having popcorn previously and a couple of drinks. And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if Revenant got great sword. And then the legend was like Traherne. And he's like, why would it be Traherne? And I was like, because he had like Khaled Bulg, right? And it was like really intense and sad and all of this stuff. And even though he was a necromancer, like he still had a great sword. And so I, I made it and he uh, like, obviously it wouldn't work because technically if you haven't played through everything and you, you know, you have End of Dragons, you have access to the elite specs. He's technically still in Game and Heart of Thorns, but, um, and, and so it would make like some raids and stuff moot, like, because he's still there. So it wouldn't line up with the story. And uh, so I posted it on Reddit as a meme. And I was like, guys, hear me out. You know, Revenant, Great Sword, Traherne is the legend. And someone literally was like, wow, you're really stupid. And I was like, okay, first of all, it literally says, guys, hear me out. It's like tagged as a meme, like as a joke. Everything I said, I was like being silly, but I actually had like a good stance for it. Like every single person that commented, I commented it back and I was like, okay, but what if? Okay, but what if? Especially for like all of this story stuff. And this person's like, you're dumb. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Honestly, I think that idea would be funny because Traherne was a necro. And I remember the mission right. where he summoned three flesh golems. And I was like, you overpowered piece of crap. I've got one. So if they made Revenants channel Traherne and become better necromancers, I think it'd be funny. They'll right? never do it. But I think and it'd be funny. Necros the other thing. Bad. Yeah. And then the other argument was, well, um, you know, that wouldn't. Yeah, that totally works for a Kanta expansion. And I'm going, you got a char that ended up turning into a revenant for heart of thorns <laughs> like what? Yeah. I, I okay that sounds horrifyingly <laughs> plausible actually I, see, see and i thought it was funny and and it was just funny that like everybody kept like commenting on it and i'm commenting back like like whiplash like yo no this would totally work but for the most part i was just memeing and people were so upset and then my second one was saying that i didn't really like the will the way will bender looked compared to like other specializations that were already in the game that I've even played, because obviously I haven't even played all of them. And then someone was like, well, it's just a new thief, you're dumb. And I'm like, that is your comment? <laughs> just speaking of people, like, what? How, I am, how is that uh, I am just imagining that it is going to be Traherne, and then you get to go in your own podcast, and you'll get to tell people that I they know, were right. wrong, yes. and you were you, right. Yeah. Yeah, see, see, it's good, isn't it? Right? Okay, right. it's exactly what's gonna happen. You get, you know, you get the the moment that I am now enjoying. Let me tell you, it feels right. great. And then, hey. but, but the better part was the same per person said, uh, "No, it should be Balthazar," and I'm like, "You literally, you literally just said that it couldn't be Traherne because he's alive and hard of Thorns." And I no, know that. That's what, like, yep. oh, <laughs> <laughs> just, just just match their insanity and raise it a level. But it's just like. 
technically he's still that's how alive you handle in these Path people. of Fire too. Look, look, <laughs> Xander, with, 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 like when someone's like, oh, the moon landing was fake, just be like, you believe in the moon? I know, right? Like, like, I like you, you have to just match their <laughs> insanity good. and raise it a notch to where they're like, what? <laughs> It's the only way to handle it. <laughs> Revenant like is not getting an elite specialization. Instead, they're getting light armor. I'm calling it. <laughs> Revenant wasn't... gets Queen Jenna in line with that. Because, I mean, like, you guys were talking uh, about overpowered we characters. Kill the queen. Yeah, we kill the queen. It's in the story. Yeah. She's dead. Okay. Trahun gets three flesh golems. Queen Jenna has a feedback bubble so big it covered all of Divinity's city. reach. Yeah, I, I don't think go. Queen That's Jenna was real to begin with, honestly. I True. think Qu Queen Jenna is one of Venice's clones. I think Queen Jenna was killed initially, Whoa. and that's why uh that's why Thackeray is always kind of kept away. So anytime Jenna's gonna do something, it's no Thackeray because he would totally know if he spent he more time like, with uh, her. And so he that's like a skill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. When I, I saw her do that bubble bad. above the entire city, I joked with my chat that we need to load her into like a trebuchet and launch her in Krakatoric <laughs> and have her make that bubble in midair to just like shield slam him with a shield the size of Divinity's reach and then boom, problem solved. <laughs> she can just conjure up a slide on the way down, she'll be fine. I just want an elite skill that summons like Logan whenever you want to. You know, when yeah. you're in trouble, you can just summon him. I have this Things change have to go inside for that. the lighting pod. <laughs> <laughs> I have this meme for every time Zoja. we see Logan, and literally every time oh, he says, no. and I go, oh. I would do anything for my queen, hair flip and everything. <laughs> every single time we see him, and people are like, you know, he's more pertinent to the story than you make him out to be, Zan. And I'm like, oh yeah, every single time he speaks, he like states the obvious, and then goes and gets hurt, and then comes back with his shirt off and tries to show off for everybody. Yes, exactly. He's very pertinent to the story. I mean, obviously it's a joke, but... So, uh, multiple person mounts like the siege turtle, guys. <laughs> nice segue. Nice <laughs> I was actually He's asked like, how I felt Logan, about Logan, Logan, so. speaking of mounts. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was actually asked about how I felt because, uh, legitimately, um, coming from Final Fantasy XIV, one of the things they have on the MOG station, which, um is kind of like, is their shop. It's not technically integrated to the game. There's like a button that you can go to the website in game that's on your UI. So, um, but regardless, uh, multiple person mounts on the shop are more expensive than regular mounts. Um, and then there's also, you have different data centers that you can be on. And if you purchase a mount that is account wide, it's also more expensive. And so people were asking me how I felt about having a multiple person mount that's just, that, that you would essentially get, obviously probably through story, um, unlocking it the way you do in Path of Fire. And so they're like, how do you feel about multiple person mounts? Like, don't you think it's uh, kind of cheating? And I'm like, no, and wow, you can I think unlock cool. it through gameplay. Yeah. There, there, there was tons of multiple person mounts you could unlock through just basic gameplay and WoW. You know, right. you'd have to like farm gold, grind gold, stuff like that, but you could you could just get it with playing the game. Yeah, and a lot of people were upset about, or not upset, they were just asking me how I felt about it because it's like, you know, using the Siege Turtle to take somebody who like might not have a mount yet and needs help getting somewhere to get that person to get somewhere. And if I felt like that was cheating, especially for exploration, and I'm like, I mean, do you that. have Mesmer portals, even though like, but even if it slug. was a thing. That, well, that too. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, they, no, they, they actually mentioned this. Yeah, they said it's not yeah, fast. The exact they same. Yeah, yeah. On, on, the, on the stream, yeah. It's not fast. The exact um, same. You line. see the update from Grouchy. Um, it was on someone's Twitch yeah. stream the other day, oh, and he confirmed uh, it won't be usable in World yeah. v. World. So uh, mm, the, sad if, siege noises. Ha, ha, they actually, they it wasn't. It was a little bit more than that. They he said that it will only be added to World vs. World if it won't make the game mode worse. Right now. That that see that that scares me a little bit, okay? Because what if people, what if a lot of people actually want it? I don't know. I don't think it will be good. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm boring. I'm boring. I don't like combat mounts. I don't like combat <laughs> masteries. I like pressing my buttons, and I think it's really scary when stuff like uh, mounts and masteries take you out of the combat system. Uh, I think instead of it, it has the opposite effect. Like stuff like special action hockeys for break bars, that does not teach people about break bars. That teaches people when the blue bar is there, you press your special action hockey and you get the opposite effect. People would never use their CC skills. And if you have, if the siege turtle is too powerful, then it's going to just, everyone's going to, instead of actually playing the game, everyone's going to waddle around in a giant turtle and fire giant laser beams, which although very spectacular, the I don't think it's very war will begin. I know. Yeah, it will indeed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's 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 a uh, it's one of the things that I am a little bit 
I'm somewhat scared about, to be honest, uh, mm. with uh, with this sort of thing. I, I hope they don't do that too much because, you know, look, if we've got nine new elite specializations, that's what I want to play. I don't want to be playing the Siege Turtle as elite specialization. I want to play my profession elite specializations. I actually feel the same way, funnily enough. Like when people were talking about uh, when I started playing the game, they're like, uh, just to go off of mounts in general, um, are you going to use your 80 boost and get your Raptor and then go back? And I'm like, no. I love to be on foot. Like I love actually checking these things out. And I also have this weird habit that's anything that's in front of me, even if it's a critter, and this is gonna make me sound really terrible. Like I wanna fight it. Like I'm gonna blow it up with my fire. And people are like, that's weird. So Note to self, never go to the park with Zane. <laughs> They're like- You wanna feed the ducks? I wanna fight the ducks. I know. <laughs> but how are you gonna get this, you know, mastery that's all the way up here for this? And I'm like, well, I'm gonna figure out a way. It was like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think it's really cool. So I completely get what you're saying about the Siege Turtle teapot. And honestly, I think it would be cool for me for probably like the first day and getting all of the masteries only because I like the idea of leveling on top of leveling. Like when I unlocked all of my mastery stuff and people are like, oh, welcome to the game. I'm like, oh, it's more experience for my masteries for leveling. And people are like, yeah, it's really great, isn't it? Like such a grind. And I'm like, I love this. I love leveling. I love map completion. So I'll probably do that. And then afterwards, like if, you know, if they add like all of the masteries to it, like they did the the previous, previous mounts, I'll probably get all the masteries and then I probably won't even use it afterwards. <laughs> but right. that's it's debate me. time. Masteries, not good. Okay. Uh, actually, bad system in this game. Uh, why? Uh, because they are in no way linked to the actual thing, right? Uh, when you unlock gliding, what do you do that actually relates to gliding in any way? Nothing. That's right. Uh, all you do is you kill a million spiders, right? Oh, wow. Now I can glide. Oh, incredible. I killed a thousand spiders. I now have the magical ability to go in a ley line. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, XP, not very creative. I actually think that masteries are, they, I mean, I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. The masteries are really well implemented. The actual things are really good. Acquisition mm -hmm. method, very poor, not good. Um, however, yeah, obviously, and, and this is actually one of the reasons why I'm so optimistic for fishing. I have absolute confidence that ArenaNet will do an amazing job of making fishing really interactive, intricate, interesting, right? And, and actually fully expanded. It's not really like, oh, throw your rod, get your fish. No, there's going to be mm -hmm. a lot more to it. I put money on it okay although i actually i i've I lost a bet recently maybe i shouldn't say that <laughs> that's, that's another thing entirely okay i i, I bet georges he could get a reading net partner back he can't i lost the bet oh. i'm lucky <laughs> anyway uh that is a, that is not <laughs> dirty Why do I feel like yeah. I actually have to edit this video before putting it on YouTube this yeah. time? No, that's fine. Oh, no, that's just, <laughs> never mind. I'm over here going, Zan accidentally mentioning something she shouldn't have. Um, the whole beginning where we're trying to figure out how to get Teapot's video up. The um, whole title of this video just changed to Teapot Bullies X8. I know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so to counter that, uh, especially with um, people talking about replayability and how they want to change that in Kantha, I agree with you on the implementation of having the experience and trying to get the mastery points uh, and, and having the, the different mastery levels and not having it actually pertain to what you're doing on the map. I totally get that. And I completely agree. Like have a test, have something like that. Like you have to use, you have to fly this far and get to this area and then you can unlock, you know, something that would have to do with making that easier. But... I actually like the idea that there's an incentive to go back to other maps to try to get those masteries. So if they changed masteries like specifically for gliding to tests like that and then use the extra experience system for something else, I think that would be really cool because it actually gives longevity, or at least in my opinion, like as a new player, it's neat for me to go back and have incentive and complete checking out the world, you know, uh, and then at the same time, I can do my world completion for my legendaries too. So, and, and it's actually, I feel like it makes you see more people on the map for, you know, hearts or metas and things like that. So you might not necessarily want to do them, but you're like, oh, I really need this mastery. I have to get this experience. So I think that that's, you know, a, a cool way to have it in there. At least the extra leveling bar once you're at max level. Because for me, that's cool. It's almost like a, like a well, prestige mode. Zan, if, if you like... If you if you don't already know, when you get max level, that extra that extra even when you already have every mastery in the game, it mm -hmm. will keep leveling up and you get spirit shards People every told time me. it levels. <laughs> so 
the the mastery system itself it's it's a gating mechanism mm -hmm. i mean jumping mushrooms updraft gliding the, the raven locks which are my least favorite because they put a wall in front of us and then made a mastery point to get past that wall like yeah. all of those it, it's just gating mechanisms from get, you know having us um jump to the end too quickly same it's like agony resistant fractals the whole system with agony resistance is set up just so that you're not like oh hey fractals well there's 100 levels well let's just do 100 right you know so you don't just skip right to the end some of them are like, you know, like the ability to auto loot. I always recommend that to people first. Uh, the ability to craft legendary things, you know, that that stuff is cool. But most of the rest is just gating mechanisms for their respective zones. Right. Yeah, no, I totally understand. I just I, I think the concept is cool because it, it, it makes me feel like regardless of the gating and it not actually pertaining to what you're trying to actually achieve with those like you know doing loops with your glider or having your advanced gliding or going on ley lines like i do think it's actually cool to see more people out on the map because of that and even afterwards but at least it's cool for me especially coming from other games where people are like wow you're really excited about that do not a lot of people play the game and i'm like yeah well when you played wow you raided or pvp'd and then you afk'd in org or for 14 like you hung out in a city and listened to people play music which was really cool but you would queue for all of your savage raids from that city, and that's it, and you wouldn't go anywhere. So for me, it's like it's cool actually. Know, is she bashing music? No, that's not what I meant. Ooh, <laughs> Everybody, drama. focus on Tifa saying I'm things fine. that you don't want to hear. <laughs> oh my god! And what I am actually very curious about, like talking about this, like experience being unrelated to the mastery. I wonder how fishing is going to work, um, because we know fishing is going to be a mastery. Uh, it would be very strange if you get better at fishing by killing mobs instead of <laughs> getting better at fishing by actually fishing. Um, I I have to imagine it's going to be like some fishing XP or something, right? Like, I hope so. It'll be most as long XP. as the pole doesn't break after twenty five uses. I'll be relieved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 there, dude. Saying, like... Do you want an unbreakable fishing rod, dude? Okay, it's going to be in the gem store. There it is. Wait, you want a you want a legendary yeah. fishing yeah. rod? Yeah, no, you yeah, want a... no, I, I think it will. No, I, I think it will actually. Oh, it's, oh, 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 oh I, I'm not actually sure about that. Maybe. I love hmm. when the gears turn in Teapot's head because he makes all these weird noises. I know. Start. He starts playing with his hair and then he looks like, just one of completely them needs to be disgusted. <laughs> Um, no, go ahead. That's a very interesting question. <laughs> that, that's a big question. Will it actually have like a gathering tool? Will it be an extension of the gathering tool system? That's a very interesting question, actually, if they would do that. I think it won't be because masteries typically aren't like that. They're typically like some kind of button you press. So maybe you can't break your fishing rod, but you will be able to get an incredibly fluorescent one or maybe your fishing rod wearing a cod piece in the gem store. So you'll be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a fishing rod where you somehow like try to get the fishing rod to go and then all of a sudden there's these little choya that just like start to catch <laughs> and eat the fish and then you're like no 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 because <laughs> uh, they look like they destroy everything they're trying to gather for you like they're you scary eat a choya into the water it comes up yeah. a little bit later holding a fish <laughs> it's like it's like the like cat fishing like where you like no never mind <laughs> you catch them with your hands okay for catfishing? Yeah. You've never heard about that? You know, I, 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 just, I just thought that was going a very double direction there. Oh, you know, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I just thought, well, okay. I mean, <laughs> fair enough. <sighs> definitely editing this video. <laughs> I'm definitely like, not. Well, no, we, we got to leave the juice, you know? Like, we, like, why are you editing the best parts out? Like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> new, new time stamp at 140. <laughs> Teapot talks about catfishing. So is there anything that you guys are expecting... Uh, <laughs> For uh, since we had for EOD, it was just a first look. Is there anything that you guys are hoping to see? Um, hoping that they change? Like, are you guys still hopeful for things like raids? Um, or even like for me, a big thing was like all of the artwork that you got to see. And I'm hoping to see uh, a little bit more about like how some of the areas in the map for Cantha will look, especially with the artwork because it's so pretty. Um, I'm really excited about the music. It looks like McLean is working really, really hard on it, but also teasing people with Twitter posts by showing sheet music with no actual music on it. Um, so is there anything that you guys are really hopeful for that they might actually do in another live stream other than Elite Specs? Or is there something that you're hoping for uh, that they might save for release? I got two, two things that I'm, I'm hyped for. One is the just more specs to play around with. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I already went into that, so I won't do it again, but that, that really excites me. And the second thing is just their renewed energy in advertising their product. Um, they, uh, I, I've seen Lazy Peon on YouTube uh, talk about it. Uh, wow, Crindor, who uh, he's got half a million subscribers on YouTube, and he got sponsored to do a little uh, thing. And he said in the video, he was like, I was literally doing a video on MMOs to play as an alternative to WoW, and Guild Wars 2 was on the list. And then they asked me to do this sponsored video. So I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I just installed the game. Why not? Yeah. So yeah, that brought a lot of eyes. And I'm I'm sure some of you are seeing it, too. But like, you know, the 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 pop, the number of viewers at our Twitch streams, it, it seems mm-hmm. like all of them is going up because more people are interested. The number of hits on our YouTube videos, you know, is going up because of just all these additional people. It, it's it makes me really happy to just see all these other people coming in and enjoying this thing that I like. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, pretty artwork's good too, but this other stuff. I know. <laughs> well, I actually had a, a full video about the promotion that I was really excited about, and people were like, "Oh, they do stuff with Prime every year," and I was like, "But the idea is that it's in like oh, association yeah, and correlation with that right now." So on top of that, especially for a streamer, it's like, "Oh yeah, so there's a thing where if you have Prime Gaming, you know, the free sub ad, you know, that makes it so you don't have to watch ads and emotes." But also, if you're playing Guild Wars 2, they have these little things. And especially for new players, like having the Karma and the bags and the mini pet is really good. Um, You know, partnering with DX Racer and just the amount of responses, even just on Twitter that you're getting from people. Like, they're very involved and a lot of it is very transparent, which I think is a huge step in the right direction. So, no, I I absolutely agree with you. Laura, is there anything you're hoping to say? Well, just talking about, um, just just coming back to what Mark was saying before, I think it's just like so exciting that we've got something on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's so, 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 so good that with all these people like coming and checking out the game, we can tell them that there's something coming in the future and that the game is in a good place. Um, just, just, I think it's so interesting how much better it is to have an expansion looming over there and then it is to just have some living world season that doesn't get a lot of people excited um regards to talking about things i'm excited for um i'm excited about the two two mastery lines that haven't been revealed yet um they they told us that there's going to be five in total i believe um we've gotten three of them so far Mm -hmm. i i just wonder if those are going to be like minor mastery lines like oh you unlock a vendor over in kainang or something or if it's actually <laughs> gonna be like some exciting feature that we don't know about yet um i feel yeah, like there's the a chance that they... opens doors <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> i hope not I-, I feel like there's a there's a chance that we might might still see some more surprises like maybe like another mount or something like that so- mm-hmm. something which which is straight up hasn't been revealed yet because it's too early yeah that's what I was hoping for too. And I kept trying to tell people, like people that were kind of complacent about certain things about it. I'm like, guys, it's a first look. It's a first look. Not everything is even ready. <laughs> like, so uh, go ahead, Tupac. I just want to see them be consistent. I think consistency is the thing that's always held this game back and always held the net back. They've got a lot of energy right now. I'm loving the communication style that we've got from um, you know, CMC Grouch and the rest of the team. I think they're doing a great job, like everyone who's involved um, in communications from ArenaNet right now. Mm-hmm. But I want to see them keep doing it. Um, I want to see that continue after the expansion. We need to see a lot of balance patches, right? Like, let's look after PvP and World of Sword a little bit better, particularly with alliances coming out. Let's actually take care of this game mode. Uh, you know, let's actually discuss the issue um, with raids, right? Like, what's going on with raids? What is that? Are we going to just replace some strikes? Great, that's fine too. I'm okay with that. But let's actually talk about that. Let's have the conversation. Maybe they come back with an easy mode. What about old content? Why is Whisper of Jaw Mag still completely broken? Like, why are all these strike missions just not <laughs> working super well? Right? Like, mm-hmm. why is this content broken? Why are raids still a bit bugged? Like, are we going to have raid easy modes? Is this old content going to get updated? These are a lot of things that I want to actually hear from ArenaNet um, because there is so much in the game right now, but it's so radically inconsistent. And I, this is something that, I, I see a lot of new players actually trip up on a lot is that they'll experience the game at all these different stages in its life. And it's so different at every single one of them. There is no smoothing of this curve. There is no, um, 
real standard for this is what Guild Wars 2 feels like to play, right, um, across the entire board. And I think this is something that I would really like them to talk about that they haven't really addressed as of yet. What's going to happen? What is Guild Wars 2? What is Guild Wars 2 supposed to be? Uh, and are we going to see that rolled out across the entire game? Like, I think that would be mm. a very, very broad, very meta topic <laughs> there. But in my opinion, it is an important one. Yeah, actually, it would be really cool if with their live streams, if they added in something like that, like even uh, opened up their forums and, uh, you know, I obviously have to weed out like the meme ones, but just be like, guys, what are all of these questions that you have? And then we'll answer them on a live stream instead of just like elite specializations for things like that. So they can talk about the direction that they do want to head in. Obviously, they did mention that End of Dragons isn't it uh, for Guild Wars 2. So that would be really cool. And then on top of that, just an actual schedule. I know one of the arguments for everything is, well, they have, you know, such as like their development uh, compared to other MMOs is, is a very small number of people. And other MMOs say, okay, you know, at this time, that's when we release this patch at this time. And they have like the full year planned ahead. And what people say for, you know, Guild Wars 2 is, well, they, they announce it when it's ready. And it's like, well, maybe more people would look forward to it and you would have like a higher population around those times when the patches are going to come out if people knew that there was going to be a patch schedule, especially leading to an expansion. Like maybe if they wanted to do something, have an expansion be like every two years and with a bunch of patches in between. That's just, I feel like it's something that's raised a lot of hype for other games in the past that I think would help. So that would definitely be a question that I would ask if they did something like that, but... Yeah, yeah, I can see both sides of that. Like one, you know, announcing dates and like a, a roadmap uh, is kind of what you described. Mm -hmm. um, you know, definitely builds hype uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, but at the, at, the, at the same time, they have to be able to commit with to that. And, you know, if they too many times have to push something back, um, then, you know, that looks bad as well. Right. So I, I do. I, yeah, I do totally <laughs> get, world. you know, release it when it's ready. Um yeah, I'm totally fine with release it when it's ready. I, th I think anyone who yeah, uh, cyberpunk was a recent example of that gone wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, release <laughs> it when it's ready is the right way to go. But, you know, communication is good, too. And if you occasionally have to be like, hey, guys, we were going to have a patch out tomorrow. Some stuff went wrong and we don't want to put you guys through that. We're going to push it back one more. We get this fixed before you get it. You know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's totally fine if they have to do that on occasion. But if they feel that too nervous that they would have to do that too much, then, you know, then they have to just kind of choose. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, <laughs> we should probably uh, wrap up and talk about where we can find things because I know there's streams that have been postponed. Everyone has uh, things to do. This is going to take like probably an hour to even upload <laughs> for me. So, um, so yeah, go ahead, uh, Muck, if you want to tell everybody once more where they can find you. Uh, still twitch.tv slash muckluck or the muckluck YouTube YouTube channel if you need guides or anything like that. Uh, mucklucklabs.com is where I do most of my guide projects and put the long term stuff there. So if you're looking for guides new to the game or stuff like that, I might be able to help you out. <laughs> and Laura? <laughs> uh, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash Lorenity uh, and also on YouTube on youtube.com slash Um However, my Twitter, unfortunately, was taken. Uh, so on Twitter, I am twitter.com slash Lara underscore IRL because Lorenity was already taken on Twitter. <laughs> um, but just just type in Lorenity and you'll find me. <laughs> and Teapot, go ahead with... Uh... My letting people chill right now, so <laughs> yeah, ah, I like it. Okay, I like see, yeah, you know, some things from tea time they're spilling over here as well. Love to see it. Yes, it is indeed. It's still me. Okay, I haven't changed, haven't changed my URLs just yet. You can find me twitch.tv, my teapot, YouTube, my teapot, Twitter, <laughs> my teapot, hardstuck.gg. That's it. Go and look at all that stuff. Okay, it's it's all there most of the time, and I'm always on time. <laughs>